Hooray, we are live. So hi, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I am Carrie Friedberg, the SF Money Coach. I'm a holistic money coach, financial behavior specialist, and financial literacy educator. I recently launched a DIY do-it-yourself personal finance 101 course with 25 mini lessons on the practical and emotional sides of money, which comes with access to a membership site where you can learn, practice, connect, and receive support for an entire year. You can read all of the details at sfmoneycoach.com slash membership. Please join me in welcoming our guest today, Janine Arricchio. Hi, Janine. Hi, Carrie. I met Janine through mutual friends in Mill Valley and eventually became her design client as well. Janine is a joy master, intuitive healer, coach, and recovering approval seeker. Her mission is to bring healing to the world by helping women step away from shoulds and step into their undeniable magnificence. After waking up to the fact that she was living someone else's idea of the dream, Janine left her prestigious interior design firm in three decades on the management track to answer the call to serve. She started Yes to Yum Lifestyling to help women come to know, trust, and love themselves so they can unapologetically live their own dream. She is a whole person certified coach, intuition medicine practitioner, an MBA, and a woman in long-term recovery. Janine brings a unique 360 degree view to coaching and wellness. She's a wise woman spirit with a deep sense of grounding, grace, and gratitude. She loves hiking with her rescue dog, Kali, painting, gathering with friends, consignment shopping, and cooks really yummy. I've, I've um, shared meals with her, plant-based meals. She's an Enneagram One human design projector, and she swears she was a fish in a former <laughs> life. <laughs> Welcome, Janine. All of that. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yay! Yay! Well, I just I thought it was a home run to uh, talk about self-acceptance today. And um, when I realized I wanted to do that topic, you, you immediately came to mind and I'm so happy and grateful you said yes. Me too. Okay, good. So to get started, would you share with us a little bit about your background and family history around money? Sure, absolutely. Um, so you heard some of it in that great intro from Carrie, but essentially I'm a former type A MBA from New York. Um, grew up on the East Coast in the 70s and 80s at a time when, um, you know, there was this big shift from women in the home to women in the workplace and you could have it all. And I did the working girl thing, got an MBA, um, did that for about, oh, I don't know, 15 years and then moved to California in 2004 in search of uh, myself and a gentler life and probably a little bit of running away from <laughs> from my problems, quote unquote. Um, and so my parents were both born during the depression in New York and um, they were children of immigrants. So they're first generation and their parents didn't have beyond sixth grade education. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and dad were the first ones to go to college and we had sort of the typical fifties family where my dad worked and my mom raised the six kids Oh my gosh. House. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. Which number are you again? I'm six. Uh -huh, that's right. <laughs> I'm the baby. Um, and, you know, ultimately my dad was very successful in business and he reaped the rewards of that. However, there was um, still always a sense of scarcity uh, in our home. And I think just having, you know, them having grown up during the depression, that just got ingrained at a cellular level. And so, um, yeah, I learned uh, that money was kind of transactional. Money could be um, love. It was a, honestly a way that my dad kind of tried to control people too. Mm -hmm. um, so some mixed messages there, let's just say, or like, I think, you know, everyone has, has their history with money. Yes. Well, thank you for that. No, I always think it's, it's so interesting and 
um, even that you you knew to think about like your grandparents and your parents and there is something about generational money messages and family culture and and all of that so so thank you um do you have an earliest memory around money i do i have a couple the first one that popped into my mind was my mom balancing the checkbook every month and it was basically i think how i learned most of my curse words that i know <laughs> <laughs> um this was not a pleasant task for her apparently because she would sit there and and do it until she could balance it to the penny and um it was when you you used the back of your bank statement right kind of, there was like a form on the back of the bank statement and i remember her being there with the the eraser and the S word and, um, you know, didn't exactly, didn't exactly make me want to balance my checkbook. It didn't look like fun. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. I could, was it at the kitchen table or somewhere? Then yeah, the totally. Kitchen. The kitchen or dining room table. Mm -hmm. And, um, probably the other thing is just remembering her clipping coupons. Like she'd get every circular from every store um, you know, we lived in a pretty rural part of Connecticut for when I was growing up and she would go to like four different stores to get the best price on whatever. And these were not like all in a, you know, a downtown area. Like she'd have to drive 15, 20, 30 minutes. Right. Um, Between and stores. Just, yeah. And I just remember thinking like, I don't think I want to do that either. <laughs> she, made, she made her shopping list on the back of envelopes that had come like in the mail. Like there's that sort of you know, depression era, which is good. She was repurposing, right? She was an early repurposer, but it it all had this sense of like, there's not enough. I see. And do you think that those messages or experiences had an impact on you? I totally do. I mean, just the fact that I remember them so clearly. Yeah, right. And uh, you probably heard, you know, a little bit in my response that I think I tend to be more of the rebellious type. <laughs> and I, you know, again, I, I have an aversion to reconciling accounts um, to this day. Mm -hmm. um, I do love a bargain, however. Yeah. Um, and hence the, the uh, consignment shopping. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that and the environmental impact of it. But um, yeah, I guess it, it just left an impression that dealing with money is kind of frustrating and it took a lot of effort. Yeah. And, um, maybe some angst. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. I know. Isn't it unbelievable um, how these experiences, which it sounds like those could have happened by the age of seven, which is like the common age when um, we have experiences and make decisions about the world or what money is or means or the emotions tied with it and how, yeah, I mean, great. You, you enjoy thrift and consignment shopping. It, it <laughs> is environmentally beneficial. Yes. Um, you get satisfaction and fulfillment out of a good deal or saving money, you know, take what you like and leave the rest. Um, and then, but still to this day, you kind of feel like a shared experience with your mom around some anxiety or um, angst with looking at the numbers and, and dealing mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. And probably a little bit of perfectionism sprinkled on top with that, having to get it, you know, getting it to the penny. Yeah. Oh man, I know. <laughs> or it's, it's something you and I have talked about, isn't it? Like that it's, it's okay to make mistakes, you know, even in your personal bookkeeping system and right. that um, it is a good practice and metaphor for life, just being with the unknown. Like sometimes you can't resolve the 17 missing cents or 17 missing dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's $170, hmm, that's worth like a second look or yeah. a line by line comparison at times. Um, but there are even in certain situations where um, for emotional security and m moving on and um, demanding schedules that I'll, I will offer to people to let it go. It's not sweeping yeah. it under the rug. It's um, you're still accountable to that spending, but it's okay to move on. So <laughs> totally let it go and give yourself a little bit wider margin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even with money. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. This is a good segue into our 
our topic today around self-acceptance. Will you share with us your journey of self-acceptance? How much time have we got? We have an hour. <laughs> I know. Okay. So a great topic, by the way. And um, I'm, I'm touched that you feel like I'm a, uh, a good spokesperson for this topic and would just say to anyone listening that it's a work in process still. Mm -hmm. is a journey that I'm not sure is ever totally complete. But um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I have this East Coast type A CEO dad. Um, so you kind of get the sense of the world I grew up in and um, really success equaled money, property, and prestige. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of it. You, you know, you as yourself, <laughs> just as a person, at least my sense, and this may not have been true, but my perception was that that wasn't enough. Uh -huh. um, so I lived in that paradigm for decades, kind of trying to fit in um, to this world where honestly, I, I just never felt right. I think in reality, as a little girl, I was a little scientist and an artist. Mm -hmm. And those were just not two things that were um, encouraged or nurtured or, um, and not going down any blame path. I mean, just yeah. saying. I would spend hours out in nature. Even I was the sixth child and youngest by a lot. So I was alone a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'd entertain myself by like looking for bird's nest and digging in the dirt and just kind of immersing myself in nature. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's a bit of a, a digression. So I think this idea that you know, I was really this something else at heart, but I was doing this like corporate capitalist track thing. Um, it's probably why I changed careers mm -hmm. um, quite a bit, or more than was normal back then. I think right. maybe now, now it's a little more accepted to just shift. And, um, but I think I felt, I, without being able to name it, I felt that I wasn't aligned with, um, what I was here to do or my spirit and my, you know, what I loved. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think that moving into Northern California in 2004, although part of it was, you know, a running away, <laughs> I think uh, it also had a huge impact on my personal growth and self-acceptance. And right. so in that way, I don't think it was, you know, a mistake or off plan. I think I was um, on my on my crooked path, and I think it started on a physical level, getting into yoga out here and more into meditation. Um, and yoga helped me, you know, to transform my body in ways that I hadn't before. Mm -hmm. And an introduction to spirituality um, that led to more of a uh, more of a meditation practice and going on silent retreats. Yeah. Um, and so getting to know myself more on, on you know, in that mental realm, right. um, <clears throat> that led to more emotional self-acceptance with um, just sort of a spiritual awakening and, you know, working, um, just doing a lot of, a lot of uh, personal growth work and inner reflection with mentors and spiritual teachers along the way and reading lots of books. And I think most recently, the, the final step is on a more energetic soul level. Um, I completed a master's certification in intuition medicine, which is, oh, wow. a, yeah, it's a, a healing modality, an energetic healing modality. And I mean, you're literally working with your spirit and that your spirit's energy and universal energies. And so um, sort of peeling that onion back of self-acceptance and getting to know myself on all these different levels. Wow. That's been the journey so far. <laughs> and isn't it really about being comfortable in your own skin? Um, all that work you did, all the stretching and uncomfortable postures and rigorous intellectual work and hours of reading and writing and sitting and just, um, you know, maybe in, you were living in the Bay Area that whole time, right? So yeah. there was lots to do, major city, uh, mm -hmm. lots of polls for, right? Like 
eating, drinking, entertaining, you know, yeah. things. And um, that a lot of 20, 30 somethings are doing 40 somethings and 50 somethings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, but there you were, you know, deep diving um, in, in personal development. And um, my story is very similar. I feel like I, uh, my move to California from Michigan in 1998 was also a, a running away or a, a, a calling to find um, a culture that felt yeah, safer or more resonant with my values. And I mean, I moved out here for the nature and the open-minded, liberal, laid-back um, attitudes in general, politics, um, all the amazing food and um, healthy, you know, um, vegetables and fruits that are available all year round and, and yeah. things like that, that are just, and I just um, found that um, those core values are, are not as prevalent in Michigan. They do exist, but in much smaller corners and quantities. And um, so, yeah, it really was a, a young adult choice to um, go where the love is and fo follow mm. the passion. And, um, and that is one of the, the big things that you and I have in common. Lots of people relocate to the Bay Area and kind of redefine themselves. Mm. And here we are, we're still here. <laughs> I, love, I love how you said go where the love is. I mean, it, it um, for me, the, yeah, the self-acceptance is totally an inside job, right? Like yeah. our culture, we're so focused on or can be like the material stuff and the social media and what's out here and who can I, you know, whatever, where, what house can I buy? Who can I yeah. hang out with? Just all that external stimulation and, um, you know, what I think we heard in both of our stories and it's probably a, a common thread is that it's really about, you said going you know, getting comfortable in your own skin, but also that going inward and getting quiet and getting to know, know yourself. <laughs> I mean, you can't, yeah. it's hard to accept yourself without really thoroughly looking at everything. Exactly. Right? And knowing what it is you're accepting. <laughs> right, right. Like, like, who am I? What, what did I do in the past? What, what is, what are the regrets and the, the things I feel guilt and shame mm -hmm. about? And this applies to money um, recovery as well, um, because that's what people, you know, stay stuck around is like mistakes from the past. Right. Um, you're absolutely right. That rigorous path of, of introspection is mm -hmm. where the, the freedom is. And man, it's, it's very intense. It is <laughs> not easy, um, but completely worth it. And yeah, I not work to do alone. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't think you can do it in isolation. We yeah. need each other. We need guidance and other people's experience, strength and hope, and also cheerleading and back rubbing and hand holding mm -hmm. sometimes because yeah. there can be rough patches. Um, but I remember all the years for, for me of struggling in, in intimate relationships and, and really craving and wanting that so much in my life and feeling behind and all this struggle for like a couple decades. Mm -hmm. And, um, and people would say, mentors, therapists, whoever would say, well, you can't love someone else until you love yourself, mm -hmm. or you can't accept or be in a healthy relationship with someone until you accept yourself. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to hear it. And that sucked at the time, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but now I kind of see and get once I let go of the urgency or forcing square pegs into round holes, <laughs> I, um, I realized that, that those, those mentors in my life were very right. I mean, it, it's just, it's just so true. We have to, we have to love ourselves and accept ourselves as whole people and, and that that's enough. And then, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, pairing up could could be more sustainable or healthier. So, what just came to me while you're talking was the word softening. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know it could have also been part of my East Coast roots, but I think there was definitely um, this notion of like 
having a thin skin and a harder heart and sort of putting up walls because that lack of self-knowledge and self-acceptance made me feel unsafe and not being able to, you know, trust. Um, and so as I got to know myself better, there was a bit of this like, ooh, just, you know, softening and yeah. lowering of the energy and not always being so like on guard and, right. <laughs> um, yeah, you're totally right about that. And oh my gosh, you've launched a new career, and this is a very, this is a very special moment because um, you created a signature formula. Um, and are you willing to share with us what is your signature formula? Sure. Um, and yeah, this is sort of distilled down, taking this process of self acceptance and self love. Um, and kind of distilling it down, I put it into four four elements. And um, you talked about core values earlier, and I I finally came to realize and admit that beauty with a capital B is like my number one core value. I used to think that was kind of meant I was superficial or something, but <clears throat> it's not really about. Um, it can be about pretty things and beautiful things, but I think of it as a spiritual principle and it's like a vibration that things have um, instead of a surface thing. And when we learn what is beautiful for us and surround ourselves with those people, places, things, behaviors, um, it's just universal law that we will attract more of the same. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, as a former interior designer and I consider myself, I, it's hard to say, but an artist of the sort, mm -hmm. um, yeah, beauty just speaks to me and it always has. And you can see beauty in like a broken rock or something, you know, it's that Japanese concept of wabi-sabi that things don't have to be perfect to be mm -hmm. beautiful. So beauty is the number one thing and, you know, figuring out what that is for you and surrounding yourself with those things. Uh, the second element is wisdom, mm -hmm. which is that inner knowing and intuition, which we've kind of talked a little bit about. Um, you know, our thinking brain, can, which is so valued in our society, can really, it's really only a data processor <laughs> and that true wisdom and being able to be open to the an infinite number of possibilities and abundance and prosperity comes from a different place. It's that intuitive seat of the soul that is literally like in the center of our heads. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I help women sort of get in touch um, with that, with their, with their inner voice. Purpose is the third part of it. Uh -huh. And that is, um, you know, our come getting connected with your why, like, why am I here? What am I meant to do? I believe we're all here for a reason and um that by when you connect with your why you just there's more meaning and fulfillment in your life and that it's kind of a key to being happy joyous and free um so yeah purpose is a big one and um and it's something it took me a long time so if i can help people get there in a little bit a little bit yeah. quicker way amazing um, yeah and the last is practice. So beauty, wisdom, purpose, and practice. And practice is basically self-care, which I think at its core is, um, is self-love and acceptance. Like when we take care of ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, mm -hmm. we are loving ourselves. And often this is a, for the first step for um, people I work with is even getting to know, like, what does that mean for me? Like how, you know... And it's sometimes it's the mani pedi and the massage, but other times it might be saving an extra ten dollars this month mm -hmm. or um, ending a certain relationship that doesn't serve you anymore or sleeping an extra hour. Um, yeah, yeah, those are the. That's kind of the secret formula. That's amazing. I love that. Um, and before we started recording today, you were you were saying, "Oh, this is an early start for me." <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've blocked out, you've designed your ideal work life schedule to start your work day a little bit later. Thank you for um, making an exception. And would you give us like uh, a sneak peek into your current self care routine? <laughs> My morning routine? Yes. Yeah. 
So I, I am naturally an early riser. So I will get up with the sun. I wake mm -hmm. up with the sun. Um, uh -oh. I, uh, so what, what do I do? The first thing before I even open my eyes is just thinking like doing a gratitude practice, mm -hmm. just thinking about what I'm grateful for. Um, <clears throat> to me, that's a form of prayer. Um, I may, I may also, you know, throw in some more sort of traditional prayer in there, depending how I'm feeling. Um, I, I have taken to just meditating in bed because <laughs> that's how I find like, if I get up and start moving around it, it may not happen. So, yeah. um, there's some of that. I snuggle with my dog because she is like the joy yeah. <laughs> of my life. Um, and then we slowly make our way outdoors. Um, she needs exercise. I need exercise. I am tremendously nourished by nature and moving my body. So we go for a hike. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I might do a little stretching when we get back and shower and usually sitting down at my computer at around 10. And honestly, most of the time I haven't looked, I haven't picked up my phone. Right. Um, like that's a, yeah, that can be a morning, morning killer. Right. Um, oh my God. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's okay. the ideal. That doesn't always happen. Right. That is the ideal. I see. Um, I'm, I'm going to think about that. I, I would like to, I, I know the old rule, like don't use your cell phone as an alarm and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, Cause then it's right there. It's in your hand. I mean, but wow. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> oh, that was great. Amazing. And those are all, those are all very practical things that anyone can, can try on, but isn't it true with, with self-care? And I, I think I'm sort of interchanging self-care and self-acceptance because I think one leads to the next, mm -hmm. um, it, or it, it makes self-acceptance a little bit easier one day at a time to take excellent care of ourselves or control the things we can so um, that we feel more peaceful and ease in, in our bodies and minds, like you were mm -hmm. saying. Um, and it changes over time, doesn't it? Like you were saying, it yeah. doesn't look the exact same every day. It isn't a formula. Um, I mean, I do have one client who has like a very comprehensive checklist that's what he needs at this uh -huh. point in his life like I did the 10 minutes of sitting I I avoided my phone for two hours I um you know and he does like literally check it off every day and share it with an, an accountability partner so uh -huh. that's another level but yeah. um but I have found that self-care morphs it morphs mm -hmm. depending on inspiration and schedules I guess oh, and, and different needs at the time yeah and yeah and really listening like there's some mornings that I'm just so tired it's like I'm gonna choose to sleep an extra half hour and skip something else like short right. the hike or you know yeah. um maybe I want to journal today instead of meditating or um yeah, yeah. so okay really, really listen I think listening to yourself is key okay amazing yeah. Um, now, you also mentioned about career changes and moves across the country. I mean, you're really a master of transition. <laughs> what does that mean? And, uh, and how did money influence your major life decisions? Uh, yeah, I guess I have done a lot of transitioning. But you know what? There's a, um, I heard this author on NPR, I think last year, his name's Bruce Feiler. He wrote a book called life is in the transitions mm -hmm. and he categorized big transitions and small ones um and that big ones happen like about every three years and small ones are like every six to 12 months or something and he did the math and basically figured out that like 80 percent of our lives were in some kind of transition <laughs> so i loved that framing you know um so, you know, big or small, um, I think we all need to be kind of comfortable with change and transition. Yeah. Um, and for me, uh, I guess what it came down to was um, just really, I don't even think I knew it at the time, but listening to that inside voice and prioritizing um, 
what just felt right instead of the shoulds and the have tos. Um, and that wasn't always easy. I mean, there's definitely, um, you know, people will tell you you're crazy or discourage you, or if, you know, you're not walking the line, they just don't understand and maybe it scares people. Right. But at the end of the day, I think the more difficult path is not sort of following your truth and slowly dying inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I was do I, I was doing, I mean, I hit a very low bottom, um, when I was just three years, three years ago, four years ago, when I was 52 and was in this job that, um, more than a job, I owned a business yeah. that, um, I, I hated my work. <laughs> you hated um, it. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't, there's nothing wrong with that. The business I was in or the company or any of it, it just wasn't, I'd gotten so far away from myself and what lit me up inside. Um, that it was, you know, it was torture and I was overweight and I was angry and I had like high blood pressure and just wasn't healthy. And yeah, thankfully I, I, you know, I heard that voice and I got the message from, I was open to the messages from others, um, other sources and, and listened and okay. So what did that have to do with money? <laughs> The, it's a big deal to walk away from owning a business and it was a very successful San Francisco yeah. design firm. Yeah. That and a, a six figure marketing career in New York. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm being really honest, I, I did consider the money aspect and I would always research like, okay, what might a person in this new field make? And, right. right. Um, but I don't think I ever completely connected that with reality, with realistic thinking. Because something I can do is if I really want something, I'll put a little blinder on or I'll convince myself like, oh, I can, I can live in the Bay Area on right. you know, $30,000 or whatever it was yeah. as, a, as a junior designer. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, and I am privileged to have had sort of, um, you know, support either through partners or family um yeah to have that backup so it totally it doesn't, i don't i think i still would have done it just probably differently right okay oh my gosh <laughs> congratulations it's really it's really something when was your last how long ago what was your last day of of design work and how long has it been now that you're on the other side it was uh August 31st of 2019. Okay. Wow. <laughs> then the yeah. pandemic and everything. And then, yes, I, I was buying and selling. I bought and sold a home at the end of 2019 and kind of dealt with that and started my business in January of 2020. Wow. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> okay. So, so do you think that self-acceptance is connected to a healthy relationship with money? Absolutely. I mean, I think self-acceptance is connected to a healthy relationship with a lot of parts of us, or if not all parts of us. Um, because, um, you know, like I think you were saying earlier about needing to forgive ourselves, forgive the mistakes we've made. Um, yeah. You know, I think most, if not all of us come with some, you know, money's taboo in our society. You either don't talk about it. It's also this measure of success. So if you don't have it, you should feel bad about yourself. And right. um, so coming to terms with how, you know, how you have, how you've dealt with money, how you, what relationship you want to have around money. Um, I think part of self-acceptance is also kind of a growing up, like a maturing. Right. And so being more responsible with things like money is part of that. I agree. Um, and it's an, it's an esteemable act. Yes. Self-acceptance is, you know, it is about boosting your self-esteem. And so having a healthy relationship with money is a big part of that. Totally. I mean, just, you know, opening the mail, paying bills on time in full, you know, following up on all the loose threads of financial housekeeping, 
um, that it, it is possible to get caught up every once in a while, but then there's always something else to deal with, you know, like closing an account or changing mm-hmm. new banks or, um, you know, payroll stuff at work and um, retirement elections yeah. and healthcare and um, even what you eat today. And uh, I mean, money is something we have to face and embrace every day for the rest of our lives, no matter what our location or lifestyle is. Yeah. Um, oh, what just came to me while you were saying that? Oh, and just uh, being realistic about our means and like, right. you know, maybe doing a spending plan and sticking to it yeah, <laughs> or trying to do your best to stick to it. Totally. Uh, I mean, one of the hardest things about um, being healthy with money and, and feeling like you have a sustainable relationship with it is doing the math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really being honest and realistic and taking Mm -hmm. a close rigorous look, um, does the math work. (laughs) If I'm bringing home this half or I'm bringing home this much and I need and want to spend this much, you know, does, does it work? Is there money left over at the end of the month? Am I breaking even? Am I, am I, squeezing out every last penny and I have, mm-hmm. I have lots of clients that that pay spend all of their money down to zero it's like running out of gas every two weeks. Mm-hmm. and then um and you know I work with people about building comfortable cushions and what would that take and what would that look like and feel like and um well yeah. and that can take an emotional toll right like that um that watching like watching your gas gauge go down and like oh am I gonna make it yeah um, yes so um, now you mentioned purpose is part of your signature yeah. formula. And I feel like, I feel like it's such a big thing. Um, the question of why are we here? Um, you know, what is my role in, in the fabric of life? Mm-hmm. So, so can you tell us like, what is your purpose or how did you find yours and where can we find ours? <laughs> so mine is to be part of the healing of the world. Yes. Um, in a nutshell, Mm -hmm. um, phase one of that for me is with people Mm -hmm. and the work I'm doing now and being of service to women and helping them have more joy in their lives. Um, and phase two, which is down the road a bit is, uh, more around the planet and I want to own a regenerative farm. So that's a, yeah, that's a future goal. Um, so to boil it down kind of simply, um, I believe it's your purpose. You can find it at the intersection of your um, innate gifts and like your superpowers, Mm -hmm. your core values and your passions. Wow. Okay. I need to write this down. (laughs) (laughs) That was so, that was, can you say that again? Yeah. Um, So it's your gifts applied to your core values Mm -hmm. and then sharing that you know, sort of with four or two, whatever your passion might, passions might be. And some people balk at the passion, at the word passions. Like, I don't know what I'm passionate about. Like your, what interests you? What, what piques your interest? What maybe gets you even a little angry? Like what spurs you into action? Those sorts of things. And I can, um, I can actually send you a, it's a one or a two pager little worksheet that, that I have to come up with a personal mission statement. Oh my gosh, that would be so great. Will you send that to me and I'll share it with, with my listeners. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love that. I I didn't mean to cut you off. Was there more on, on that? No, I mean, you know, we could go on and on, but yeah, um, (laughs) but yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. And, um, the intuitive medicine. So I, I, you know, we are our longtime friends and, but sometimes go months or half a year without talking and catching up and stuff. And then, um, you know, last time we caught up before today, you shared with me about the course. Um, and how did you get into that? And <laughs> what inspired intuitive medicine work? Well, ironically, I think I was just kind of led to it by my intuition, mm-hmm. not, to be, not to be hokey. Um, you know, at the, I was maybe eight, nine years into doing, you know, a lot of personal work. So I was getting in tune 
more in tune with my intuition and just staying open. Yeah. Um, you know, so much of learning, accepting and loving ourselves is about staying open and following what feels right. Like we've talked about mm -hmm. and actually one of my yoga teachers, um, who was also my coach, brief, um, for a short time, mm -hmm. she had been through this program. And when she talked about it, I kind of got that little like ping of like, pay attention. <laughs> So I attended an or you know, one step at a time. I attended yeah. an orientation and um, the orientation really resonated with me, even though I wasn't quite sure what hundred percent, what it was about. Right. Um, but I was like, okay, this is really talking to me. I'll take one class. And mm -hmm. they took one class and loved it and signed up for the next one. Oh, and wow. Before you knew it, um, you know, getting to know myself, energetically, I just knew that this was kind of the next step in my um, self-knowledge and self-love yeah. sort of journey. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you think intuitive medicine could be applied to money or someone's relationship with money or? Totally. Yeah. I mean, it. Um, it's at its heart, it's really about... Um, sort of owning your space and fully embodying, fully embodying your physical and energetic bodies with your own spirit and not others. Okay. Energy. And yeah. so, you know, money is energy, right? Money right. is about flow. We get, it's got to stay flowing in order to keep a healthy, healthy balance. relationship and yeah, that healthy balance. And um, we intuition medicine, we can um, clear out, we can clear out old beliefs or ancestral like patterns, or even maybe your money issues come from a past life or have uh -huh. been, you know, brought forward from a past life. So we can clear that out. Yeah. You might have contracts with other people, places or things, or even with money itself. And so we can look yes. at that and rewrite like contracts. Known and unknown, right? Yeah. Like you may know about these ties <laughs> to family yeah. members or friends or ancestors, yeah. and, and you might not know about them. They might just be there in, in a form in, and then it manifests in the form of keeping you stuck or unhappy yeah. or discouraged and disempowered around money. Those mm -hmm. are yeah, signs perhaps that energy work and intuitive medicine could be really healing. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's like an additional superpower that you offer yeah. people when they work with you. Yeah. Yes, it's optional. I mean, not, it's not for everybody, but okay. um, yeah, it is definitely can be part, part of the package. So can you give us a little taste? Will you lead us in a, in a little visualization? I would love to. Okay. Um, really probably the most profound tool that I've learned and I use all the time is um, grounding. Mm -hmm. So um, like a five minute kind of thing. Sure. Perfect. I'm going to set myself a timer. So I stay honest okay. here. Yeah. Okay. So ideally for this type of work, um, you don't want to be cross-legged. You want to be able to have your feet flat on the floor. Okay. You don't, you don't need glasses. Yeah. Remote. Use our ocular vision. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're comfortable closing your eyes, that's good. Otherwise you can just sort of soft gaze in front of you. And also if it's comfortable, um, palms up, just sitting on your lap, hands on your lap. And it's always, uh, great to start with the breath to kind of get in, get into our bodies. So I like to start with three deep belly breaths, um, long inhale through your nose and filling up your belly with all that beautiful oxygen <sighs> and an audible exhale out your mouth um, these belly breaths start to slow down your nervous system so another big inhale really filling up the belly and <sighs> as you're doing do a couple more of those breaths and as you're doing them just sit intend that your emotional energy and all your body's energy falls low to the ground. The beautiful thing about energy is you just have to intend it and it will happen. There's no 
you know, secret tricks that you need to know. So maybe the next breath, take up to your collarbones, ah, let it all out and drop that energy low to the ground. Maybe whatever happened this morning, or if you have some energy left from last night or what's going to happen later today. And a big inhale, maybe fill up the back of your heart and that back body. And you should start to feel things maybe slowing down a bit and just greet your body and notice how it feels to be human. Feel your seat in the chair and your feet on the floor. Feel the edges of your body and quick scan if there's any areas that feel tight. Do you feel the air on your skin? Do you feel tingling in your hands or feet? Just greet your body with reverence. And you can ask it how it would like to be grounded today. And just trust the first thing that comes to mind. It can be an image, a word, a color, a symbol, an actual thing, an anchor, a tree root, a golden rope, whatever came to your mind, the first hit is your intuition. And anything after that is your thinking mind. So connect that thing to your tailbone. And just let it slice like a hot knife through butter down through all the layers of the earth to the center of Mother Earth. So past topsoil and earthworms and tree roots and minerals and crystals and underground rivers and molten earth. And at the center of the earth, there is a glistening golden circle with your name written in, in golden script. And you can just plug that grounding um, line right into that spot. And this is your spot to come back to anytime. Connect with the earth, connect with her low, slow, deep healing resonance. resonance. It's so calming. Good, maybe you feel the pull of gravity a little bit stronger when you do that. And then widen that, that grounding line to um, a little bit wider than your body. And you can just, all that emotional energy you dropped earlier is just gonna go right down into that grounding field. And you don't have to worry about it. Mother Earth repurposes this energy and grows flowers and nourishes the trees and the animals. So it's all this wonderful, wonderful circuit. And if you imagine the bottoms of your feet opening up like giant sunflowers, the biggest ones you've ever seen, like a dinner plate, and your feet just start soaking up Earth energy. Like I said before, there's an actual heartbeat. It's called the Schumann resonance. It's been measured. It's like 7.83 megahertz, really slow, low, deep grounding resonance. And that energy flows all the way up to your legs, to your hips, moves around your pelvic bowl and goes right back down that grounding line, taking with it anything that doesn't serve you other people's energy. And you can um, intend that that circuit of earth energy up your feet and through your legs and back down into your grounding, that that just continue with you the rest of the day and keep you connected. And you can do a quick version of this anytime you're feeling maybe overwhelmed or anxious or tired even. Um, and there's lots more we could do if we had more time, but <laughs> I always like to end these with giving yourself a hug. We've also been so like touch deprived for the last year and a half. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. That was beautiful. You're welcome. I loved it. Oh my God. Grounding is good medicine. I'm writing down the the time so I can come back to that um, on the recording. <laughs> I love seeing you at work. This, this is the best. Um, 
I will you tell, tell us what you're up to in your business. I want to hear about your latest projects and if people want to learn more about you and what you do, how can they find you? Yeah. So the best place to find me is on my website, which is yes to yum. And the two is the number two. Mm-hmm. And on there, you can read more about me and my approach. Um, you can sign up for a complimentary, what I call a yummy connection call. If you have any questions about lifestyling, my coaching, the energy work, I'm happy to um, and love just getting to know people and connect. Connection is another one of my core values. Yeah. You can also find my uh, social links on there. I'm on LinkedIn and um, pretty much just LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And there's a link to my meetup group. I've just started doing a monthly gathering. If you're in the Bay Area, I have a meetup group called Marin Women Healing in Nature. Mm-hmm. And we're doing monthly healing circles on the fourth Sunday of each month. And I also just started a Tuesday morning hike. Um, and really right now I'm focusing on integrating the intuition medicine into my, um, my coaching practice. And I've got a few spots open on my calendar for Mm one-on-ones and would love to hear from anyone if they want to know more. Thank you. And congratulations on this amazing business that you created and launched during the pandemic. And, um, I know it's thriving and several of my clients have um, hired you as well. So I highly recommend um, working with Janine. Thanks, Carrie. That means a lot. Vice versa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Janine. This was really fun. Uh, and with that, we're out of time. Thank you again for tuning in and please acknowledge yourself for taking time to learn, practice, connect, and receive support around money. I am Carrie Friedberg, the SF Money Coach. You can contact me and find information about my coaching practice, personal finance 101 course, and financial literacy membership site at sfmoneycoach.com. Please reach out if you have any questions or comments. I'd love to hear from you. We'll talk soon. Bye. Thanks, Gary. And with that, we're out of time. Thank you again for tuning in, and please acknowledge yourself for taking the time to learn practice, connect, and receive support around money. I am Carrie Friedberg, the SF Money Coach. You can contact me and find information about my coaching practice, online course, and financial literacy membership site at SF, as in San Francisco, sfmoneycoach.com. Please reach out if you have any questions or comments. I'd love to hear from you. We'll talk soon.